What's good? What's good, people? It's your boy Kelvin back at y'all, man. Salute to everybody, man. All right. Let me make a quick video. Uh, I want to talk about Shay and uh, Nikola Jokic. Um, man, I'm seeing all this back and forth and stuff going on, man, between these two fan bases, man. And uh, it's kind of ridiculous to me. Uh, both of these players are great in their own way. And I know... For the last few months, it's been this on coin debate about the MVP, and the shit is stupid in my opinion. So, I just want to give my unbiased uh, opinion on both gentlemen, and um, that's that. First off, I'm very happy and pleased with to be associated with the guys on our channel because we don't get involved in that crap. First off, the racial crap. And, you know, we don't get involved in being emotional and in our feelings about a player or a team or anything like that. And we just call it like it is. We call it down the middle. And uh, very happy and pleased about that. Um, so, as we know, OKC Saturday, they got eliminated by the Mavericks. And then Denver yesterday, they got eliminated by the Minnesota Timberwolves in the Game 7. So, so, it's, this thing been going back and forth. Who the MVP, who not, and when both teams lost, and who's to blame, and who's a fraudulent MVP, and nothing like that. Well, the truth of the matter is, neither one of them is a fraudulent MVP candidate, and both of these guys are great. Both of these guys are superstars. Both of these guys led their team as far as they could, and neither one of them shouldn't be blamed for anything. You see, this is the deal. When you're a superstar on your team and you're on a naturally constructed team and you're the superstar and you just play the hands that are dealt to you, whatever the GM and the front office put in front of you, and you take them as far as you can, you know, without any manipulation, no super teams like that, and you actually play well and you lose to a team that's a little bit better, there is no heavy criticism or blame or accountability or anything like that that is going to be laid on either player. You see, when OKC lost Saturday, if you looked at our channel, nobody on our channel made any videos trashing Shea. Why? Because Shea played like a superstar. And he played great. He did the best he could. He led his team as far as he could. He played well. He played well the whole series. They just lost to a team that had improved dramatically since their trade, the Mavericks. When they traded for P.J. Washington and Gafford, the team improved, and they were a little bit better than OKC. The same thing with Denver. Denver actually lost some players on their bench, and so their team actually came back to the pack from last year. But... The team was masked. The deficiencies were masked because Jokic was just so great and he was doing everything. And he played the best he could and he lost to a team that was a little bit better in a game seven. There is no shame to that. There is no heavy criticisms that should be laid to either one of these guys. And if you look at our channel, there was no emotions. There was no trashing of either player or nothing like that. You see, OKC, let me, let me talk about OKC first. OKC's problem is what I told you guys five months ago. Anybody that listened to our channel, if you heard me breaking down Lakers games about five months ago, I told y'all what the problem was with OKC. Nobody on YouTube talked about it. Nobody in the mainstream media talked about it. I told you guys when I was watching them lose to the Lakers, I told y'all, OKC's main issue is they don't have any size on the interior. But yes, they have Chet Holger, who's a tall guy, but he's very slim. And yes, he blocks shots and stuff like that. But when they play a physical team, they have issues. That's the reason why the Lakers were beating them back in December. Go back if you want to. Go find our videos when I was breaking down the Lakers games. And I told y'all that about OKC then. They lost to the Lakers three times. Why? Because they couldn't handle the size of the Lakers. 
LeBron was big and physical, and more, most importantly, Anthony Davis. They didn't have any issues with Anthony Davis. They, had, they kept having the double team and stuff like that, and Anthony Davis would find open guys and cutters, and they couldn't handle the size of the Lakers. And I told y'all back then, five months ago, I'm not bragging anything, but, you know, I try to give unbiased analysis when I watch games. I didn't watch a whole lot of the NBA, but I was watching the Lakers games, and I saw this weakness in OKC five months ago, and I told y'all that. And what happened in this series against the Mavericks? At times, and a lot of times, they got dominated on the backboard and the interior by Gafford, you know what I'm saying, and Lively. In game six, Gafford had four offensive rebounds. Lively had four offensive rebounds and some other guys. And they dominated OKC on the backboard and in the paint a lot of times during this series. Gafford was dominating with a bunch of block shots and in the interior like that. And they were getting beat up on the inside. And I told y'all that. And ultimately, that is really what happened with them. It's no fault of Shea or anything like that. They don't need any more scoring. They need to address their issue on the interior, which I told y'all that months ago. Okay? They need... If I'm OKC... You don't need, I, I see guys on Twitter and still talking about, oh man, OKC need more scoring and stuff like that. No, they do not. If I'm OKC, and I told the guys in the chat, and I sports chat, we talked. If I'm OKC, you got all these draft picks. You need to call the Chicago Bulls and ask them, what do y'all want for Andre Drum? It don't seem like much of a trade, but that is a game-changing trade that would help OKC get over the top. They need guys, bodies on the interior that can rebound and defend and change shots and block shots. And a guy like Andre Drummond, who can give them 10 and 10 every night, would be a game changer. And they might, and they need like another veteran or two on a team. OKC is a young, ascending team, but they're very light. These dudes are very skinny and frail with undeveloped bodies and stuff like that. They're very young and 22, 23 years old, and you can beat them up. And the Mavericks beat them up on the interior a lot during this series. And that is their issue. Not shooting, not scoring. So, I didn't make any videos, and nobody on our channel made any videos trashing Shea. Shea was a worthy MVP candidate. He was the runner-up in the MVP, and rightfully so. You know, I thought Jokic and the numbers bagged up Jokic being the MVP. And to me, Jokic was deserving MVP. And there was no shade on Shea. You know what I'm saying? Shea is a great player. He's a fine young player. And OKC has a bright, bright future. But they must address their issue on the interior. They need big bodies. They need two big bodies. The rebound, the fin, block shots, chain shots. Once they address that, they're going to be a team to deal with. They're going to be a championship team. But until then, they're going to have that issue. They're going to get beat up, and they're going to lose. And that is the reason why. It's no, no blame they need to go to Shea. None. And nobody made any videos trashing Shea. Any of you trolls, anybody out there that was trashing Shea, talking about he was an unworthy MVP candidate, you're wrong. You're wrong for that. Now, let's go to the Denver Nuggets. There's no shade that need to be thrown at Jokic. Their issue is their bench was inconsistent and the number two option on their team, Jamal Murray, in the playoffs was very inconsistent. If y'all watch Scap Attack videos, I know y'all going back and forth on YouTube. Y'all saw Scap Attack talking about he making excuses for Jokic and Jokic stands and all this old crap. No. Give Scap a lot of credit. He's been talking about Jamal Murray for a while. And if you actually watch Jamal Murray, he was very inconsistent. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And uh, game seven, he had a great first half. He, kinda, he was all right. He kind of tailed off in the second half. But the Denver Nuggets problem is the supporting cast was inconsistent. Really, they're – Second best player throughout the playoffs and stuff was Aaron Gordon. Jamal Murray 
as great as he is and as clutch as he is, he does have the clutch gene. You know, him hitting them game-winning shots against the Lakers mask all the inconsistent play and the bad shooting. And then what happened in game seven? Jokic, you know, he carried them as far as he could. You know what I'm saying? They came off a tough series with the Lakers, a tough fire game. Even though it was fire games, it was a tough physical series. He had to deal with Anthony Davis and stuff like that. And then when he got to Minnesota, he got in the 0-2 hole. And, you know, they battled back out that hole. And ultimately, in the end, game seven, they just ran out of gas. You know, Aaron Gordon had a bad game. Michael Porter Jr. had a bad series. And the bench didn't do anything. The bench only had five points off the bench. And so, Minnesota was just a little bit better. And they won the game seven. There is no accountability or blame or anything that needs to go to Jokic either. He played well. He played great. He played with the hands that were dealt to him as far as his team. He carried them as far as he could. He's a worthy MVP. That is what an MVP do. He mastered the efficiencies and carried a team as far as he could. The dude had what? 35, 19, and 7. I know he missed a bunch of threes and he, you know, at the end of the game, he was kind of out of gas and was missing threes, but there is no blame to go to Jokic and there is no blame to go to Shea. Y'all need to stop this stupid back and forth crap between Shea and Jokic, the extreme fans. Any white fans, I'm going to call it what it is, that's extreme Jokic fans that's hating on Shea, y'all need to stop. And any black fans that's extreme Shea fans that's hating on Jokic, y'all need to stop. The back and forth color crap need to stop. Need to stop immediately. It's stupid. Y'all look dumb as hell. Both of these guys are great. They are worthy MVP candidates. Neither one of them needs any major blame. They lost to better teams. They carried their teams as far as they could. And they both were worthy MVP candidates. The numbers and the stats just favored Jokers. That's the reason why he won MVP. In my opinion, he deserved the MVP. It's no shade to Shea. No. Shea is a great player. He played heroically in game four and game six. And I have to agree with my boy Mark, what he said. Um, he told me the other night when we was watching uh, the Mavericks and OKC. He said that, in his opinion, Shea is a better all-around player right now than Anthony Edwards. And I have to agree with him. Anthony Edwards has a higher ceiling, and in the long run, he's going to be better than Shea. But Anthony Edwards, it must be nice to go out there and run your mouth and wave bye-bye and stuff like that. But during the game, you play like trash. You shot, what, 6 for 25 or 6 for 24 or whatever it is and have an all-star and cat bail you out. And a six-man of the year, Nas Reed, you know what I'm saying, bail you out. And uh, Jay McDaniels scored 23 points and hit three threes. And you can run your mouth and play like trash like you did in game seven and go out there and wave and stuff. Young brother, you need to stop. I like Anthony Edwards, but bro, win with class, bro. Win with class. Because the basketball guys will humble you if you keep doing that crap like that. Stop that. But the unnecessary racial BS between Shay and Jokers and all that crap, crap you need to stop, man. You know, I spoke about the media, the black media hating on Jokers because that's what I seen and that's who's most prominent. And they were doing that. But it wasn't any Shay to Shay. You know what I'm saying? Shay is a great player. He deserves no blame. Jokic is a great player. I don't care about them having a big lead in the game seven or whatever. Jokic carried his team as far as he could. The team was just not as good as they were last year. And Minnesota was a little bit better, and he ran out of gas. There, you know, that's that. And see, if you come here to behind the bench, we don't play that race crap or in our feelings or emotional crap. We just call it down the middle. Yeah, we might disagree, and yeah, we might have players we like, but for the most part, we just call the shit down the middle for what it is. Nobody trash Shea. 
Nobody trash Jokic or nothing like that. You know, they just, both of these gentlemen lost the teams that were a little bit better. And, you know, OKC is going to be a, a team to deal with in the future. And if Denver makes some small improvements to their bench, get a little bit more scoring, they'll be right back in the mix yet next year. And Jokic, he's in his prime. He's a superstar. Shea is just hitting his prime. They're going to be a team to deal with. And neither one of them deserves any heavy criticism. None. You know, I was telling the guys and I was a little chat, there's only one Michael Jordan that can carry teams and bail them out over and over and over, year after year after year with minimal amount of help. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, every other superstar needs some type of help. And, you know, Jokers just did not have that. The numbers and everything bag it up. These guys disappeared around him uh, in game seven and a lot during the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Jamal Murray, you know, as good as he is, that's the reason why he ain't never been an all-star. He always hurt and he inconsistent. You know, it get masked because he's a great clutch player and he hit big shots late in games and stuff like that, but he's largely inconsistent. And if you watch Scap Attack and other YouTubers who unbiased, look at their videos, you see, he said it. He put the data out there. You know, Jamal Murray's been very, very inconsistent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he played a good first half, but, you know, second half, he didn't do a whole lot. And so, man, it's no, no shade on Jokers, man. The man played heroically, and he did the best he can do with the cards that were dealt. He had no dealings with the front office, no putting players in position, no super team and nothing like that. He had a naturally constructed team, and the team decided to uh, let players go off their bench, and the supporting cast wasn't as good, and Minnesota was a little bit better. Same thing with OKC. They're an ascending team, but they have a problem with their interior, and they need to address that. Shea played great. He's a worthy MVP candidate. No blame to her, to, to him. So that's that. That's all I want to say, man. This nonsense between the shave hands and jokers, it need to stop, man. It need to stop. Y'all look stupid. Both sides. Stop it, man. This racial crap between the two players, stop. It's stupid. It's nonsense. That's that. So, salute to both of these gentlemen. But outstanding season. The top two guys in the MVP, rightfully so. And maybe the top two players in the NBA. Jokic, Shea, you can have an argument with Luka. You know, Anthony Edwards is up there. But Anthony Edwards at the time is inconsistent, bro. And I like Anthony Edwards. There's no shade on him. But young brother need to stop talking. Stop doing all the nonsense. And just go out there and play, bro. Win with class, lose with class. Stop doing all that stupid crap, doing a lot of talking during the game and foolishness, bro. You won a second round series. You still got a long way to go. So stop. So that's that. I just wanted to say that, man, real quick video. I holla at y'all. I'm up out of here, man.